Conference Championship presented by Capital One. What a sweet, sweet 16 matchup this afternoon in Albany, New York. The defending champion LSU Tigers taking on two-seed UCLA. Angel Reese, the SEC Player of the Year, taking on Warren Betts, an all-Pac-12 member this past season for UCLA. Let's take a look at our championship bracket. Later on this afternoon, it'll be top-seeded Iowa against five-seed Colorado here in Albany on ABC, and then tonight, USC Baylor and UConn Duke on ESPN. And as we welcome you courtside, hey, everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo. So happy to be with you for the Sweet 16 today on ABC. Rebecca, just an incredible atmosphere in what should be an amazing day of basketball. So many close and compelling games yesterday. Expect the same here today. Now, for these two teams, we're talking about the two best rebounding teams in the country and a primetime matchup in the middle with Angel Reese, Lauren Betts, as we take a look at our most reliable players brought to you by Xfinity. This game could certainly come down to which team can control the paint. And for LSU, so much of that is Angel Reese. Averages 19 points. 13 rebounds a game. She is the best offensive rebounder in all of women's college basketball. And on the other side, Lauren Betts is a different kind of post player from Reese. She's 6'7", has terrific footwork, 15 points a game, nine boards a game, an elite rim protector as well, shooting 65% from the field. Big time numbers this season for Reese, nearly 19 and 13 for Betts, nearly averaging a double-double as well for a little more on this matchup. Let's send things over to another Hall of Famer, Holly Rowe. Well, this might be the biggest matchup of the Sweet 16, literally. Reese by four inches, but this will be the first time they've ever faced each other in a game. They are very familiar with each other, though, as they were teammates on the senior national team for USA Basketball at last year's FIBA America Cup. Angel said, oh, I know how Lauren plays. They went up against each other in practice every day. They've had to take reps. They've had to bang in the post, and they are very familiar with how this will be a big challenge today. Being out of foul trouble, staying out of foul trouble will be a huge emphasis, but offensive rebounds is the focus for both. All right, Holly, let's take a look at today's starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. For LSU, it's Flaugier Johnson and Angel Reese who were part of that title team a year ago. Haley Van Lip has been to a Final Four in the past with Louisville, her first year with LSU. Michaela Williams, the freshman. And then Anissa Morrow, the transfer for UCLA. Kiki Rice, London Jones, Charisma Osborne, Angela Dugalich, and Lauren Betts. Take a look at rebounding margin. UCLA leads the nation in rebounding margin. LSU is second. And we talked with Kim Mulkey. Rebounding was the first thing she brought up, and it's usually the first thing she brings up, but it was the first thing she brought up with this particular matchup with Corey Close and UCLA understanding what a good rebounding team they are and of course for Corey Close who was also top of mind for her squad. Yeah both of these teams need to defensive rebound in particular UCLA LSU is such a good offensive rebounding team gets extra looks that way. Kim Mulkey in her third season as LSU head coach led the Tigers to their first title in program history a season ago. This should be an incredible Sweet 16 matchup. Betts and Reese to jump it up. And away we go in Albany, New York. And right away, Dugalich turning, taking, and hitting UCLA on the board first. UCLA starting out in man-to-man -man defense. That is what they will play primarily. Lauren Betts with the assignment on Angel Reese as we expected. And you see London Jones up into Haley Van Lith. Here's Flange Johnson, who's had a tremendous sophomore season. Morrow trying to get the angle, could not. And UCLA able to secure the glass. LSU also in man-to-man. -man. Important to note, Angel Reese has gone against other 6'7 players this year. Camilla Cardoso with South Carolina and Tamari Key with Tennessee. Jones can't hit the three. London Jones can get hot from deep, but comes into this game just three for her last 25 from three-point range. 
Here's Reese, a little too strong. Morrow got a hand on it, but controlled by Betts. Nice job by Dugalich to box out Anissa Morrow so she could not corral the board. Kiki Rice, the talented sophomore, has had a big start to this tournament. 20 points in the opener, 24 in round two, but turns it over here. However, it's a dead ball turnover. One of the areas where LSU can be deadly is when they get live ball turnovers and get out in transition. They are excellent when they can run. And that's something Corey Close pointed out to us. She said, look, 22% of their offense comes from transition. We can't allow it. As Johnson unable to finish the reverse. But when you're attacking the on-ball screen and Lauren Betts is the defender, that time I thought she could have gone back out to Morrow for the shot. Here is Betts working hard against Reese, who was able to defend it nicely. And then a foul, a late whistle called against Betts, who collided with Morrow in the backcourt. And so an early personal on Lauren Betts. I thought she called it on Morrow. Well, oh, take her. you're right. You are right. Called it on Morrow. It looked to me like Morrow had position and that Betts just ran her over. So now Kim Mulkey is glittering with confusion. An early personal on Morrow. Lauren Betts missed the opener with a foot ankle issue. And played very well in round two as Van Lith gets whistled for the first. Let's take another look at that tie-up with Morrow and Betts. How is that on Morrow? That, that absolutely should not be a foul on Anissa Morrow. Here's Lauren Betts backing down Reese. Van Lith came with the tie-up. And the possession arrow belongs to LSU. Outstanding post defense by Angel Reese to body up. Holds her own, holds her own, keeps her hand out, and then you wait for your guard to come in on the dribble and cause that tie-up. Outstanding defense by LSU. And already a couple of turnovers for UCLA. They were 132nd in the nation when it came to turnovers per game. Here's Williams, the freshman, so smooth. As talented as any freshman in the country, and we have a lot of great ones this year. If you run off-ball screens for, for her, for Williams, she can come up, and she is so good in the mid-range. Here's Betts catching and finishing, plus the foul. And Lauren Betts, a chance for three. We'll see who they give this personal to. Reese trying to play the high side, but a perfectly delivered pass, a little touch at the end that gets her that foul. But Ryan Lauren Betts is so good at holding position with 6'7, not only giving a target hand, but pointing, letting her players know exactly where to throw it so it can go over the defender's hand and only be caught by her. That personal on Reese, her first. And off the bench for UCLA, Gabriela Jaquez. Here's Reese, facing up, can't hit, rebound, Osborne bangs it in the air and able to save it off of Johnson, ruins basketball. And one of the things that's interesting to me with Angel Reese, reverse pivot face up Lauren Betts, what's her advantage is driving to the basket, but when you have one foul, you are not going to be as aggressive as you would be without it. So you have an early foul on Morrill, Van Lith, and Reese for LSU. This is not a deep LSU team. Rice fires it in. Betts draws two. Hakez. Back to Rice. Jumbled spacing on the right side for UCLA. Betts into the corner. Hakez. A little too strong. And Williams, the weak side rebound. Really great recognition by, by Lauren Betts, knowing that when the double team came, finding her open shooter on the perimeter. Here is Van Lith, last year Poa getting ready to check in for LSU. Van Lith can't hit the jumper. Blanche Johnson gives LSU an extra possession. Her three is good. Flage Johnson, who has improved dramatically from three this season, over 38%. She has been exceptional in particular in the last five games. Now 11 of 16 from three in that period of time. Here is Betts, bodying into Reese, able to shovel it in. Again, Reese having to be a little bit careful with that one personal. Well, LSU is not doubling until Lauren Betts puts the ball on the floor. Osborne comes up with a steal. 
Osborne, the flick ahead. Hawkes can't get to it, and UCLA gives it away. Flage just coming in, getting the board, retreating it confidently, confidently stepping into the win three. We talked to her yesterday, and she's just a player. As only a sophomore, you just feel the confidence oozing out of her. But she has this dynamic magnetism to her. You see those numbers you were talking about over the last five games. And Kim Mulkey was telling us just how much her leadership, Johnson's leadership, has blossomed this season as Johnson hits another three. Flage Johnson back-to-back -back triples. And whoever Lauren Betts is guarding continue to set the on-ball screen with her on to Flage. Jones a quick trigger. In and out. Betts the offensive board. Another chance here for UCLA. Betts looking to go to work. Could not. Reese a nice stand defensively. Kimulki talked about how in timeouts now it's Flaugier Johnson who is so often gathering her teammates and vocal, giving instructions just a sophomore, but speaking to that leadership growth. Here's Hawkes cutting through the D, lost the handle. Iwala getting early minutes for UCLA as Rice gets tripped. And who are they going to call it on? I believe Flaugier Johnson. That'll be her first. Flaugé Johnson catching fire early from three. Flaugé Johnson, defense goes under the screen, steps into the three confidently. She's the vocal leader of this team. Now it's time for Get More, brought to you by Geico. We were talking to the LSU players about all of the attention, both positive and negative, that they're receiving. And it's because they're doing more than we have ever seen athletes do before. Flage Johnson told me, people need to get used to it. This is the new normal. You can't put us in a box anymore. And she's right, whether it's the covers of magazines or Flage as a rapper. Her music has over three and a half million streams since her latest album came out. Ain't my fault. And it ain't their fault that they are getting all of this attention both positive they are doing so much they are brands and she said the most important thing people who need to remember all of this stuff was done in the summer or leading up to this tournament they are locked in and focused on one mission right now all their stuff's just dropping right now so that's for all the haters out there but they are wonderful women doing lots of different things and they are the defending champions holly lsu's first title last season as jones can't hit Rebound, Flage Johnson pushing pace for the Tigers. Johnson the Euro and gets fouled. Flage Johnson will shoot two. We've seen LSU get out in transition on turnovers, and that time just off of a miss. Defensive board, Flage Johnson gets it and goes so quick down the floor. Now, it was interesting along the lines of what Holly was talking about, hearing Angel Reese also talk about this. And I always find it... So incredible we talk with angel what a global perspective she has about the growth of women's basketball and saying I, I love that more people are coming to our game than ever before and if sometimes that means i'm going to catch negative attention that's okay i have the shoulders that can carry it Angel Reese has been completely unapologetic about who she is and how she plays. She owns it. She's aware of the attention she brings, and she loves it. She has had another terrific season, the SEC Player of the Year. And LSU, a 10-7 lead. Flange Johnson has the last eight points for the Tigers. Much smaller lineup now for UCLA with Betts on the bench. Here's Osborne. Osborne to the corner. Haquez, five to shoot. Her floater is short. And Morrow the board. And last tier, Poa in for Haley Van Lith with the other four LSU starters. Has trouble with the handle here. Jones racing ahead. And London Jones lays it in. Corey Close talked about maybe a couple easy twos helping get London Jones unlocked. We'll see if that layup does anything for We her. saw a game, you and I, Ryan, earlier this season where she went 7 of 10 from 3 against Utah. She can be very dangerous. Reese pops it up and in. Nifty shot from Angel Reese. A little bit easier when you're not shooting over 6-7. 
Lauren Betts getting that breather with Dugalit. Shani Walla in the game for the front court of UCLA. Here is Jones, a deep three. No. And Jaquez couldn't quite save it. Hey, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. And yesterday, we were able to just lock in all day. Incredible games. Today, we have an amazing slate here on ABC, LSU, UCLA, then Iowa, Colorado, then on ESPN. You'll have USC Baylor followed by Duke and UConn. Get to watch all the games. You get to listen to our great studio show. Get you ready so you know what to watch for. Watch the highlights of what you've just seen. El Dre and Cheney holding it down. Van Lith back in for LSU. Last year, Pole remains on the floor as well as the freshman. Williams gets a breather. What a spin from Morrow. And Morrow lays it in. Nisa Morrow, so talented. Can face you up, hit from the outside. We just saw her take it off the bounce. Playing in her first tournament, had gone to the first four with DePaul, but no further as Hakez curls it in. And again, you could see Reese being a little careful with the help there, having already picked up one foul. Boa barges in, can't finish. Rebound secured by Dugalich. Edson Reese getting into it up the floor. Here's Osborne on a three. No. Johnson the rebound. Johnson has it poked away, stays with LSU. Poe's jumper won't go. That was not a great decision in terms of shot selection, though, from Poe. Kiki Rice can't force it in. Betts keeps it alive. There it is in the arms of Dugalich. In and out on a three, and Poa is fouled on the rebound. UCLA now 0 of 7 from 3. This is a team on the season shoots 33% from there. It is an important part of what they do offensively. Meanwhile, LSU 2 of 2. Both of those attempts, Flaugé Johnson's. Charisma Osborne picks up the foul there, not Hawkins. So that is number 2 wow. on Osborne. She has made 150 straight starts. She's played more games than anybody in program history as Van Litt can't finish. Here comes Rice. Rice has it poked away by Van Litt. Rice gets it inside. Hawkins, nifty footwork and the finish. Beautiful job as Del Rosario came over to help. Stepped right around the 6'6 player. Knock away by Hawkins. Here comes Hawkins running with Cameron Brown. Hawkins unable to finish it. Rice does. <laughs> and UCLA back in front now. A plus 10 in the paint in this first quarter for UCLA. They're on a 6 0 run. Here's Van Lith. Driving it right, gets the foul on Kiki Rice. And free throws here for Haley Van Litt, first personal on Rice. You gotta love footwork in here. 6'6 six, six comes over, just the up, under, step by, and finish. Beautiful stuff. Angel Reese back in for LSU. Flaugé Johnson will get a breather. So last year, Paul, Michaela Williams, Van Litt, Rice, and Reese, and Morrow are the five for LSU. Betts, Brown, Zontag, as well as Kiki Rice and Hakez, the five for UCLA. UCLA will go deeper into their bench. LSU plays seven. And Kim Mulkey made very clear, we play seven, I'm gonna play seven. <laughs> Lith hits the second, game tied at 15. Here's Rice around the Betts screen. Betts good feet out in the corner. Zontak missed the three badly. Akez keeps it alive. 12 to shoot for UCLA. Brown shovels it back to Rice. Rice will take the long two. No. Betts. Another offensive rebound. 
Rice looking to drive it, and that's going to be an offensive foul called on Kiki Rice, her second personal. And last year, Poa leads LSU. That's the 31 first charge she's taken this season. Just a great job moving, getting to the spot. Yes, you do not have to be stationary. You just have to get there first, and Poa was able to do that there. Now, Ryan, UCLA continues. When the ball goes inside, I'm sorry, you at... Um, LSU continues, and the ball goes inside. As Angel Reese dealing with a bloody nose right now. Get a little time. You get about a minute to deal with blood. And you can see Angel Reese saying, get me a towel, get me a towel. Yeah, Betts gets her right in the face. Incidental contact, yes, but the result is the same. But the double team's coming on yeah. Lauren Betts, but UCLA's perimeter players haven't been, made them pay when the balls come back out and they've been, gotten open looks from three. Yeah, they're 0 for 8 from three. Here's Reese, deep catch, can't finish. Knocked away by Hawkes, controlled by Betts, and UCLA can hold for a final shot here. Betts. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Jones fires early, short, out of bounds, and she leaves time for you for LSU. Way too early. Uh, you have to take the last shot of the quarter when the shot clock is off. Also, London Jones, one of six now in this opening quarter. Here's Williams. Three seconds left in the quarter. Williams will launch. Can't hit, and that'll do it. For the first quarter, tied at 15 after one in this Sweet 16 matchup. We will chat with LSU head coach Kim Mulkey when we come back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The NCAA Women's Championship on ABC is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Moments ago, Holly Rowe caught up with LSU head coach Kim Mulkey. Well, Coach Mulkey, what stands out early in this quarter with the post matchup, Lauren Betts and Angel Reese? Oh, two outstanding players, and I think both teams are trying to get the ball to them. Um, I think transition has hurt us a little bit. They've gotten some uh, breakaways a little bit. Uh, I think both teams are playing extremely hard. Both teams seem to be a little bit excited and windy and uh, got a tie ball game, 0-0. Flage has had some excellent leadership in the huddle, but then she comes out and hits those two big threes. How do you see her elevating? Well, she's done that the entire playoffs. Flage has taken her game to another level, and it's made us better. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Well, you can see Flage Johnson in the huddle there. Helping lead her team as we take a look at our game track. Brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Roche Johnson, eight points. The rest of the team just seven. UCLA with 14 of their 15 in the paint. And Lauren Betts, five points, five rebounds. You know, Rebecca, you mentioned UCLA has got a lot of great looks in passes out of doubles from Lauren Betts. They're just 0 for 8 from three-point range. Yeah, they've done a good job playing through the paint, not only owning the battle inside, 14 paint points to four, but also getting to the offensive glass. Right now, UCLA has six more field goal attempts because of their ability to get those second chances. They just need to complement it by hitting the perimeter shots after the ball's gone inside. Here is Betts, cross court, Jones attacks, gives it to Brown, right back to Jones. Jones, tend to shoot here, Hakez has it poked away by Reese. And it will stay with UCLA, six on the shot clock. And again, that possession playing through Betts on the left block. She did an out, outstanding job passing it out on the weak side wing. Nothing came of it. And a steal by Reese. Angel Reese all the way in for two. Angel Reese gets it done on both ends of the floor. 
Averaged nearly three steals per game this season to go with her nearly 19 points and over 13 rebounds. Hawkes dumps it in. Betts right back out. Hawkes is three. It is good. There is the first three of the game from UCLA. That's how you do it. This is a game where Lauren Betts could have a number of assists if her teammate, teammates are just able to hit from the perimeter. Here is Johnson. Stopping on a dime. Off to Morrow. The DePaul transfer. Morrow trying to find an angle. Could not squeeze it in. And UCLA controls. Cameron Brown up the floor. And a whistle is going to go against UCLA. And Lena Zonta. And Morrow is shaken. So Morrow taking a minute here after that shot from Lena Zontok. Hmm. Meanwhile, UCLA with foul trouble to be concerned about in their backcourt. Kiki Rice, Charisma Osborne, both with two personals, both starting this second quarter on the bench as they take a look at this last foul. All right, L, thank you very much. So the foul was reviewed, did not rise to the level of an intentional foul, so just a common foul on Zontok as we check in with Holly Rook. After Nisa Moore to the ground hard, she was taken a look at by the athletic training staff of LSU. She seems that she is okay. She stood up, so told some of her teammates and assistant coaches, I'm fine, I'm fine. I expect her to be back in this game. All right, good news there, Holly. Second quarter action of this Sweet 16 matchup. Winner will play the winner of Iowa and Colorado. That game up next on ABC. Johnson can't hit. Del Rosario gets denied by Betts, but a foul is called and Corey Close apoplectic. I can understand why, because without the replay, just with our clear eyes, it certainly looked like it was a clean block. That's a clean block, Ryan. I think they call it on Dugalich, not on Betts. Okay, okay. And Dugalich, I believe, caught the arm of Del Rosario. So that is the first personal on Dugalich. Betts has not picked up one yet. Kiki Rice and Charisma Osborne on the bench. Well, Osborne back in now with two fouls. Rice remains on the bench. And this is one of the things that LSU does. They put fouls on you, but they typically also get to the free throw line. They get there more than any other team in the country. So even while UCLA today in this game has fouled, they haven't put LSU at the line as much as usual. It's four or five from the line as Van Lift comes up with a steal. Flicks it ahead to Williams. Here's Reese. Reese backing into Dugalich and winning the battle. Angel Reese with the two small afterwards. And because Reese is in with Del Rosario, she is not going to have Lauren Betts on her as the defender. A little bit easier to score. Betts on the other end gets fouled by Del Rosario. And Lauren Betts is going to shoot two. Maria Del Rosario picks up her first personal. Well, you see Warren Betts after transferring from Stanford. The minutes went up. So did the production. I thought it was funny talking with her yesterday about receiving single coverage. And she said, you know, sometimes I'll get the ball and realize they're defending me one-on-one, -on -one and I'll be confused. Like, <laughs> do you really want to do that? <laughs> she was talking specifically about their second-round matchup against Creighton, where she went to town against that single coverage in the first half. Misses both free throws here. Stan Lee, active hands in this first half, knocks it out of bounds. Been a different season for Haley Van Lith, who was the featured star of Louisville. Here she is part of an ensemble cast in that starting lineup for LSU and playing more of a true point guard as Rice can't hit the jumper.
Here's Williams turning the corner. Can't lay it in, and Betts secures yet another rebound, her seventh of the half. Rice has it poked from behind. Haquez able to collect. Here's Haquez, her three. No. Reese, strong rebound on the weak side. Here's Johnson twirling and finishing. What a move from Flaugé Johnson. And UCLA will take a timeout. What a play by Flaugé Johnson. We saw her early in the game drain from deep. Spin around. Finish. We see you, Flaugé. Look at fueling the run brought to you by Wendy's. Flaugé Johnson has a, had an incredible quarter and a half here. Offensive blast, dribble out, drain the three. What could you do off the on-ball screen? Drain another three and then want to add a little spice to the recipe. Flaugé Johnson simply has come to play. For a little more on Flaugé, here is Holly Rowe. Well, she's one of the most impressive young people you will ever meet. She has so many goals to be great. And as she was flying all around the country after last year's national championship, she's got recording studio time. She's in L.A. having talk shows. She's doing music festivals. Her mom, Kia Brooks, is her manager. And she said, I'm having to find out gyms everywhere we go. So no matter where she is for an appearance, I'm setting up gym time so she can be getting her workouts in. That she's able to fit all of this in and navigate all of this. It's just incredible. She gets up at 5 a.m. in the morning and diligently works all day long to be great at everything she's doing. You can tell she's put the work in. She is a much improved player over the, the one we saw have such a successful freshman campaign a year ago. And it was something Kim Mulkey was raving about to us yesterday. Here is Rice, wiggles through traffic and turns it over. A carry on Rice. UCLA turns it over for an eighth time. Kiki Rice coming off a game in the second round where she scored 24 points, incredibly efficient. She was 7 of 13 from the floor, assisted the ball, rebounded the ball. She simply has not been able to find her groove here yet. And one of the things Corey Close talked to us about was not wanting Kiki to focus on being perfect. Talking about how that word is really the word she thinks about with Kiki. As Williams drains the jumper, said too often there can be paralysis via analysis for Kiki Rice where she's in between do I score do I pass so she wants her to maintain her aggression and understand she's a score first point guard and she could decision make without taking away that scoring here's Iwala off to Haquez Haquez swoops through and gets fouled Haquez will go to the line. Hey, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Elite Eight continues tonight on TBS. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Michaela Williams picks up her first personal. Gabriela Haquez, the younger sister of Jaime Haquez, an impressive rookie for the Miami Heat. And both play... Similarly, competitive, gritty styles of play. Corey Close was saying last game, as UCLA was trailing Creighton, it was Hawkins who kept saying in the huddle, I'm open, give me the ball. I'm going to keep shooting, I'm open. Even as she had started shooting poorly, she has that eternal confidence. Williams lost the handle out of bounds. LSU turns it over for a fifth time. <laughs> Kim Mulkey not enamored with the possession. I do like, though, Angel Reese immediately went over to Williams, gave her five, tapped her on the back, said it's okay. Freshmen need that kind of reinforcement when they make a mistake. A reminder, Iowa, Colorado coming up next on ABC. Here is Haquez. Behind the bet screen, thought about it. Dugalich can't hit the three. Offensive board, Osborne. So it wasn't really an angle there, and it's out of bounds. Stays here, nine to shoot. Lauren Best should be frustrated. She was open when the ball was on the wing, and she was open when the ball was in the corner, didn't get it. And then they tried to force it in when she wasn't open. You have to continue to play through Lauren Betts. 
UCLA, one of 11 from three as Jones misses again from deep. Johnson looking to push. Here's Roger Johnson, the hesitation, and gets fouled by Jones. Free throws for Flaget. Look at that. She's got a player sealed, sealed, sealed. And the second she relaxes, which she shouldn't, but the second she does is when they try to force the ball into her. Almost reminds me a little bit about what we heard Pam and Steph talking about yesterday with Camilla Cardoso and South Carolina going away from her at times. And every single time she would get a touch, something good would happen. Usually yesterday that was a layup from Cardoso. Right. <laughs> right. Today for Betts, it's been either buckets or creating open shots for her teammates, Holly. Well, when they get Lauren Betts touch, touches, good things happen. So we've been tracking her touches. In the first quarter, she had 11 touches. So far in this second quarter, just six. So they can be a little more intentional. Corey Close has said when they struggle at times, it's because they're not playing through her. So continuing to get her those touches in the places she can excel is important for UCLA. And touches are different from shots. She was getting a lot of those touches and then passing the ball back out to open teammates. You need to play through her does not mean she needs to shoot the basketball. That foul called on Del Rosario, her second. She checks out. Morrow back in for LSU. Del Rosario gave him terrific minutes, though. Here is Kiki Rice. Lob inside. Betts catches it off the tip. Marquez cutting through, lost it out of bounds, and it lasted LSU again. Reese involved defensively. We know about the points and the rebounds, but Angel Reese, such an impactful defender as well. And a turnover. There is Reese coming up with a steal. Six twenty, LSU lead. Van Lift will pull. Back iron, no. Bets the rebound for ninth of the half. Osborne gets a clean look. Hit, hit. Rebound. Williams, the freshman, hauling it in. One for twelve. UCLA is now one for twelve from three, and they've been great looks as Johnson saves it. But to UCLA, it springs a break. Kiki Rice will lay it in. Flaugé Johnson would have been better served probably there to let it go out of bounds. She just said, my bad. Yeah. Kiki Rice, just her second field goal. Van Lip, no rebound. Gugulich. When well, UCLA is defending, that mid-range pull-up is there for LSU. Rice dips inside and floats it in. Kiki Rice starting to awaken. And LSU will take a timeout. You're right, Ryan. Kiki Rice certainly has come alive. Starts defensively, corrals the ball. Tough finish with her right hand over her shoulder. And then just stepping right through, sees a little daylight. Must feel so good for the young player to see the ball finally go through the net. Those were UCLA's first field goals in the paint in the second quarter. And we know in the first, they dominated in the paint at 14 points in the paint in that first. Holly? Well, her teammates are hyped up as they came over to the bench to get into the huddle. Lauren Bent yelling at Kiki Rice. All day, Kiki, all day. They want her to keep eating. This was the number two recruit in 2022. Only Lauren Betts was a higher recruit. Went to Stanford initially and then transferred to UCLA. This is a UCLA team that is talented enough to win a national championship right now, and they have young pieces that they should have together for a while. London Jones was the number 22 recruit in that 2022 class. Here's Morrow spinning and finishing. Big bucket there to stabilize from LSU. Love the play out of a timeout. Get Morrow the touch, set the on-ball screen. She is very good driving to the basket. Dugalich tried to get it in, could not. Betts reposting. Dugalich missed it right, along, and everything. Out of bounds. 
to LSU and UCLA now one for 14 from three-point range. And I know I've been saying this a lot, but right before Dougaly shot the ball, Lauren Betts had an outstanding dunk in. And she was open. Pass it in. Get it back out. Clean your look for three. And you're not just saying this as a, an empathetic post. You can relate. <laughs> I can do that, too. Oh, nice cut. And Reese finding Morrow. Gorgeous pass and the finish. Great response here from LSU since the timeout. Six-point LSU lead. Their largest of the game. It's been a tightly played opening half. That's wants it, and again, just trouble feeding the post here. A kick ball. Playing through the elbow. Beautiful pass by Angel Reese. You see how quickly she had the ball and then released it? Those court goggles? Yeah, I don't know. We see her, though. Inbound, Betts able to control. Here is Rice. Rice spinning away from Johnson. Rice, oh, nifty. And then Reese, an emphatic rejection. What a play by Angel Reese. Angel Reese has played so well defensively since picking that first foul up in the first quarter. And a foul here is going to go against Betts. That will be the first personal on Lauren Betts. Third team foul against UCLA. Reese coming in from the backside, beautiful block, recovers well, and she's been able to stay relatively aggressive on the defensive end, even with that one foul. Here's Johnson. Johnson's jumper is good. Roger Johnson so smooth off the dribble. 13 first half points for Johnson. Eight-point LSU lead. Here's Jones around a big screen and an offensive foul called on Zontok. And Corey Close is incredibly upset, stomping up and down the sideline after that foul call. Does she give her something? I mean, it's obviously a big screen, but it looked like it still may have been a legal screen. And now it's going the other way as Morrow gets called for the illegal screen. And that is her second personal. Cameron Brown will come in, Greg Zontok. So it's Brown, Rice, Betts, Jones, and Jaquez for UCLA. It's Johnson, Del Rosario. Last year, Poa, Williams, and Angel Reese for LSU. Here's Rice. Pitching it back. Hakez will drive it. Rice, good look. Catch, fire. No. Raises the rim. Loose ball picked up by Brown and then can't finish the layup. Missed opportunity there for UCLA. LSU on a little 6-0 response after the Bruins had cut the deficit to two. Here's Williams shimmying and hitting. The mid-range games of both Michaela Williams and Flaugé Johnson have been a difference here. And the LSU crowd starting to get into it here in Albany. Jaquez will fire, can't hit, rebound, LSU, good box up from Del Rosario. Here's Reese putting it on the deck, can't reverse it in, Betts comes away with it, and just a slight difference between the game and shot clock here. Still play for the last shot. five in the game had been three for her last 30 30 from three 
And perhaps that gives UCLA a little boost going into the locker room, but it's LSU who leads by seven, thanks in large part to Flage Johnson, who's with Holly. Flage, your leadership in the huddles and then your performance on the court has elevated your team. How are you doing it so well right now? Uh, just trying to beat up for my team. We're young, kind of. Michaela's a freshman, Lee's a freshman, so just trying to talk them through it. UCLA starting to put a little more pressure offensively. What has to happen for your team on defense to change that? We got to tighten up a good team. They're a good team. That's what good teams do. We got to minimize their runs, maximize, maximize ours, and we'll be okay. Thank you, Flaje. Thank you, Holly. All right, Flaje. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Get ready to start the third quarter of this Sweet 16 matchup. And LSU, the defending champs, lead at UCLA 34-27. As we take a look at our championship bracket, the winner of this game will play the winner of Iowa and Colorado coming up 3.30 Eastern here on ABC. As we welcome you back courtside, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo. Tightly played first half. One player really separated themselves. Flaugé Johnson, just terrific. As we take a look at today's Need to Know, brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. Flaugé Johnson was simply the best player on the floor in that first half. We got to see a little bit of all of the different things she does. Dribble, drive, spin. No, that's not a travel. That's just beautiful basketball. Stepping back, hitting threes at a high clip. And then the mid-range game as well. Flaugé getting it done, too, on the defensive end. And then UCLA got a lot of really good looks from the perimeter. Simply were not able to connect on them. Two of 17 from three. They're all over the floor. They're getting coming from touches inside. Just really struggling from three. All right, Rebecca, anything to be done there? If you're UCLA, you just keep taking those shots and hope at some point they fall. Just try to get them through Lauren Betts, first of all. Go inside so that she can pass it back out. They were getting good looks. They were just simply missing those looks and try to get something in transition. Stops, push the other way, see if you can get something in your transition or your secondary before LSU recovers defensively. Well, here we go. One half away from someone heading to the Elite Eight. Three-seed LSU 34, two-seed UCLA 27. Williams jumper won't go. Flaugé Johnson, the offensive rebound. These are the top two rebounding teams in the country. Here's Van Lith using the screen from Morrow. Jones was able to fight through. Van Lith, Hoist, can't hit. Rebound bets. And let's see if London Jones gets going a little bit after hitting that three to end the first half. Bobs it inside and really just threw it away. Reese there for the easy interception. Three steals already today from Angel Reese. Who also has six points, six rebounds. Here's Williams. Williams hesitation. Over to Johnson. Johnson, nifty crossover. Can't hit the jumper and Dugalich, the box out. Oh, look at Johnson coming up with a steal. Rajay Johnson looking to shake Osborne. Goes cross court. Van Lint. Pull up. Rainbow. Good. Kayla Williams and Angel Reese both put that offensive possession off. They were still in the backcourt. Like, all right, Flaugé, do your thing. You got it. First field goal of the game for Haley Van Lint. Great hedge by Angel Reese that time. Oh, what a pass from Betts and cut from Dugalich. Really nice. Really nice cut on the weak side, and Lauren Betts has the vision to see it. Here's Van Lith, lost the handle, Rice has it, three on O. Oh. Kiki Rice will lay it home. I'm interested in why LSU looks tired to start the third quarter. We saw them have a completely different third quarter in the second round against Middle Tennessee where they came back and played with incredible energy defensively. Right? It's been a couple yeah. of possessions where they've been a little bit more plotting. Well, they talked about that halftime as perhaps season changing in the second round as Reese gets denied by Betts. Going back to work. Reese spins in and gets the whistle. The number two on Betts. 
and Angel Reese is going to shoot a pair. Hey, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Now, to that point, Rebecca, Flaugier Johnson, Angel Reese, you see Angel top five in Division One in free throw attempts and makes. They detailed for us halftime of that game against Middle Tennessee and feeling like they all held each other accountable in a way that they hadn't yet this season. And Flaugier Johnson said she thought it was the missing ingredient for them as a team to really be able to maximize their potential. They came out and just stomped Middle Tennessee in the second half. Ended up winning the game by 27 points. And they're hoping, obviously, it propels them much further than that. And they were much different on the defensive end. That's where it started. That's what propelled them on the offensive end as well. Here's Kiki Rice. Getting it back. Firing away. Can't hit. Short on the three. Last tier pull with a rebound. In for Van Lith early here in the third. It was last year Paul who started that second half rather than Van Lith in the second round game. Marquez bounces in. Reese knocks it away and another turnover from UCLA. Johnson leans in, can't hit. Dugalich the rebound. 13 UCLA turnovers. Here's Jones. No. Dugalich. No. Dugalich can't finish. I I'm confused. Betts and Reese were both just waiting in the backcourt rather than going towards the rim. And then Jones is fouled. Everybody looks tired right now. Bent over, hanging, their hanging on their shorts. And I know a lot of minutes were played in that first half, and there's been times where this has been an up and down. It's just surprising to see this kind of fatigue early in the third quarter. Right. Here's Jones, catch, fire, no, follows it up, dumps it in, Bits gets fouled. That's going to be on Reese, who picks up her third after just picking up her second. Just got to let that one go. Just just give up the two points. We're all right with that. Got to stay in the game. We saw the difference in LSU down the stretch. The first time they met South Carolina this year, and Angel Reese fouled out, and what a massive impact it had on her team. Kim Mulkey bringing it with that outfit for usual. As Reese secures the rebound. We saw foul trouble play an enormous role last night. Cameron Brink. Having to spend much of Stanford's loss on the bench before finally fouling out. NC State, the victors there. Morrow loses it. Trying to get it back. Does. Here's Williams. Oh, what a look from Williams. And Johnson gets fouled. Outstanding pass for Michaela Williams. Great cut in there by Flaugia Johnson. And yes, Michaela Williams goes up, sees her teammate at the last second. Boom, fires it. Really, really well done. And that is foul number three on Kiki Rice. Now, one of the things that Kiki had told us was she felt like the way UCLA's guards drive it, they could get LSU in foul trouble in this game. Hasn't necessarily played out like that thus far, but something to watch now, especially with Reese going to the bench with three persons. Yeah, more than anything, the reverse has been true. Yep. Flaugier now with 15 points. London Jones, one of eight from three in this game, gets another look and hits. How about London Jones? One for eight and steps in confidently to that one. Not shy. No. Not deterred. Here's Morrow fading and hitting. Eight points for Anissa Morrow. Here's Betts getting the touch. Elbow jumper. He is smooth. Boring Betts. So dynamic, and a foul here. If you're Charisma Osborne, 
that is just not worth it. You already have two personals. Picks up her third, trying to steal an inbounds pass. And Kiki Rice checking out of the game with her three fouls. Now Corey Close has to manage a lot more than just matchups in terms of what she wants out there offensively and defensively. Yeah. Fouls certainly are playing a part in this. 42-37, LSU in front. Del Rosario whips it. Here's Morrow, back to work. Morrow elevates and finishes. Anissa Morrow, so dangerous in the post. Talked about her excitement for this moment as Jones misses that one. After never having played in an NCAA tournament, Morrow saying she transferred here to win a championship and playing a big role here in the third quarter of this Sweet 16 matchup. Anissa Morrow, a player who averaged 26 and 12 a year ago at DePaul. We know she can get it done on the offensive end. Caitlin Clark arriving for a Sweet 16 matchup. That's coming up next on ABC, Iowa and Colorado from Albany. What a slate of games we have today. So you have Caitlin and Iowa coming up next on ABC. Then at 5.30 on ESPN, you have Juju Watkins and USC taking on Baylor. And then you have Paige Beckers, who has been on an unbelievable burner, reminding everybody how excellent she is, and UConn taking on Duke at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Caitlin Clark arriving, I would argue she's arrived. <laughs> <laughs> you see all the number 22 Iowa jerseys in the crowd here. There were legions of fans waiting to send her off this morning to the arena. Johnson, what a rejection. Flange comes back and blocks Lauren Betts. Johnson on the other end is going to get called for the offensive foul. Not only a block, but a block on a 6-7 player, and then pushing it the other way, head up, smile on her face. <laughs> what did Kim Mulkey say about Flage? She is a joy, joyful person, yeah. And we have seen that smile shining brightly thus far in this Sweet 16. Here's Betts. A deep catch, kick it out. Hakez travel. 14th turnover for Corey Close's team. You know, we saw those key stabilizing buckets for Morrow in the post after Reese went out with her third foul and UCLA had gained a little momentum. Important to remember, Anissa Morrow is only 6'1. That's what she's listed as. As we have a whistle here and a foul against. Is it going to be on Morrow or Del Rosario? It's Del Rosario. Yeah, her third. And Kim Mulkey, once again, not thrilled with but, the call. But because of Morrow's ability to yeah. score on bigger players, they run a play for it. They yes. run the, the, the elbow screen. It works really well. You just have to wait for your big to be set before you go. And, and she said to us yesterday, I actually like going up against bigger players. Lauren Betts has at least six inches on Morrow. That I can get off my feet quicker than they can. Dead, surrounded by four. Brown cuts and lays it in. How impressive is the passing out of the post bin from Lauren Betts? She doesn't get flustered. She's got bodies all around her, and she makes the right read. Here's Morrow spinning, bodying, and it's going to be another offensive foul. For Morrow, that will be her third personal. Lisa Morrow gets off her feet quicker, moves her feet quicker. Here, spinning. Did she get it with the elbow? I think a little push with the ball slash arm. Kim Mulkey certainly in disagreement. 3.30 to go in the third quarter of this Sweet 16 matchup. LSU has held a modest lead for a while now. Dump it in, Betts draws three, Brown kicks out, great movement here, Jones connects! A gorgeous possession that started with a Betts touch. 
LSU, meanwhile, three straight offensive fouls on this side, and London Jones going to get called for a defensive foul here, her second. Outstanding possession by UCLA. Into the post, reverse out, touch, touch. The plus one pass, every single player touches the basketball, leads to a terrific look for London Jones. to the bench. Here's Williams. Quick first step. Can't bank it in. Betts trying to control the rebound. Could not, but now UCLA has it. Osborne running with Jones. Her three. You bet! An 8-0 UCLA run, and Jones has put the Bruins back in front. I've been marveling at London Jones and her confidence and her shot, even when she was missing repeatedly early in this game. Huge one there to take the lead. Holly Rowe? Well, when the team huddled up to take the court in the second half, they were all serious. Everybody was tight. And London Jones said something that made everybody laugh. I don't know what she said, but it had to be something like, I'm about to come out and hit these threes because <laughs> she's hit three in a row. And she had missed her first five. Oh, my goodness. Flaugier Johnson. The highlight reel that Flaugier is putting together today. Just incredible. Jones has started 0 for 5. Now he's hit 4 of her last 7 as Osborne gets in on the act. Buckle up. Here we go. Back and forth. UCLA and LSU. Two-point Bruins lead. UCLA, five of their last nine from three after starting ice cold. Reese back in with her three fouls, misses there. Here's Jaquez, a lot of space. Jaquez drives it, kicks it. Looked like Jaquez could have had a layup, perhaps. Jones in the corner. Not that time, was wide open. LSU needs to dig deep now. Again, same thing we said at the beginning of the quarter. Players looking tired. And a foul here on Brown, battling with Morrow on the block. Not looking tired on the offensive end, though. Certainly not Flush A. Johnson. I mean, Ooh. come on. And then Charisma Osborne. Makes and misses are both contagious here. After London Jones hits a couple, Osborne gets into the action. First field goal, first points of the game for Osborne, who is second all-time on UCLA's scoring list. Over 2,200 career points, only Denise Curry with more, over 3,000. You know, the interesting thing here, Rebecca, as Morrow misses the first last year in the tournament, in tight moments when LSU needed a bucket so often it was Alexis Morris who brought it for them. Obviously, she is no longer with LSU, has since graduated. Who steps up in that moment for LSU this season? It's so important that it has to be a guard because they're the ones with the basketball in their hands. They're the ones who can create. It's been Flaugé Johnson all in the tournament. Michaela Williams, another player who's very capable of that. who is at 81.5% this season. Winner of this game will play the winner of Iowa and Colorado. Osborne, no. Reese soars in for the rebound, her 10th. Really nice job that time by Haley Van Lift defensively on London Jones. Didn't let her get a touch. Here's Flaugé. Williams around the screen, gets denied by Betts, then flings it out of bounds. UCLA ball with the shot clock turned off.
Iowa, Colorado up next on ABC. Later on tonight, USC Baylor and then UConn Duke on ESPN. UCLA can hold for a final shot here. At the end of the first quarter, London Jones shot too early, gave LSU another chance. Expect the experience of Charisma Osborne to play out here. Boa, well, what is Osborne? Osborne dumps it in and turns it over far too early. And, and then fouls. No, it was like she got some foul on bets. Yes. That's what happens when you go too early. Not only do you give the other team an opportunity to go, go the other direction, but you put your team in a position like that where you can get a foul on your big. This drives me crazy in high school basketball. <laughs> A little less We're crazy seeing a lot of here. Coach Lobo come out right now. <laughs> but right, what what are you doing? Yeah, and, and you don't expect that from Charisma Osborne, who is the consensus leader of this team. She's in her fifth year, more games than anybody in program history, and it's Betts' third foul. So just a huge mistake there. Plus, Reese at the line now, obviously a chance to tie the game. But I guess you get one more opportunity to have the last shot. <laughs> Unless you go too early again and give LSU another possession. <laughs> Reese hits both free throws. Smart. Take Reese out on a defensive possession so she doesn't pick up another foul. Reese has yet another double-double. Her 78th in her career. Shot clock is turned off. Once again, here's Osborne. Osborne driving, kicking, Rice extra feed. Dugalich at the horn, can't hit. To the fourth quarter we go, tied at 48. Holly will chat with UCLA head coach Corey Close when we come back. What an incredible matchup this has been. Tied after three. And the fourth quarter coming up after this message and a word from our ABC stations. one what's in your wallet lsu and ucla tied at 48 as we get ready to start the fourth quarter of this sweet 16 matchup and holly Rowe caught up a moment ago with ucla head coach Corey close coach close the conversation you just had with charisma osborne after she got lauren betts into some foul issues there what happened yeah we, we need to have better clock management down the end of that we need to wait longer we wanted to create the last shot of the quarter there we got to have better score management down the stretch started way too early we needed to get Lauren a touch we can't lose track of her for long periods of time even when we hit some big threes we can't fall in love with that you have had some better momentum here in the second half on offense why because we're playing better defense and we're not take we're turning the ball over in live ball turnover situations that really just fuels their offense when we can play defense in the quarter court that's a much better situation for us thank you coach you bet thank you they want Lauren Betts to get touches because she has simply been a boss in this game. And she's going to draw so many defenders. On this possession, she's able to score, get the and one opportunity. But she has been elite in her passing out of double and triple teams. It hasn't necessarily resulted in assists. For example, she starts this play here. Three assists on the day, but that is not an indication at all of how elite her decision-making and passing has been. Here are today's star stories brought to you by Honda. Blaje Johnson, 17 points. Angel Reese, yet another double-double. London Jones started quietly and has broken out from three in this game. And Lauren Betts, eight points, 13 rebounds. And she could have about 12 assists if UCLA hadn't started so poorly from three. Also, how about just the disparity in attempts, Rebecca? UCLA has taken 28 threes. LSU has taken four. Here's Kiki Rice, the sophomore on the drive, laying it in, plus the foul. Kiki Rice spent much of the third quarter on the bench in a great way for her to establish herself here to start the fourth. She's got the smaller van lift on her, uses the rim, finishes inside. 
So much contact there. Let's see. Uh, oh, on the head. The head yeah. yeah. Second foul on Van Lith. Well, just to reset that foul story for you. Reese has three. Morrow has three. Del Rosario has three. For LSU, for UCLA, Rice, Osborne, and Betts all with three. See UCLA extend the pressure. No problem for LSU breaking it. Winner of this game will play the winner of Iowa and Colorado. They're up next on ABC. Reese lays it in. Push the foul. And Angel Reese a chance for three. Simple but effective basketball. Just a post-to-post -post screen. Angel comes around. The defender is on her back. Simple. Morrow sets the screen. Defense gets hung up. Yeah, her chance for the and one. Reese with 12 points, 10 rebounds. Second foul on Dugalich as Reese misses the free throw. Rebound number 14 for Betts. Rice, little juke, tosses out. Osborne and Dugalich have gotten jumbled up. Betts, deep catch, left hand, short. She's so good. She's just so good. A double-double for Lauren Betts. Here's Van Lith. Off to Morrow. Oh, yeah. Both teams have it going now. Yeah, you can really run an effective pick and pop with Anissa Morrow. Dugalich thought about it. Lobs it in. Betts gets the touch. Dugalich has it knocked away. Morrow and Reese there. Here's Morrow then losing the handle. Nice job by London Jones getting a paw in there. Fourth quarter, though, UCLA has done a much better job getting Betts a touch, deliberately so. A minute and a half into this fourth. A trip to the Elite Eight on the line. Jones gets fouled by Johnson, and that will be the third foul on Flaugé Johnson. Keep your eye here on Charisma Osborne. What is she saying? Get the ball into Lauren Betts. Why is she saying it? Because she's 6'7 and can finish over either shoulder with her right or left hand. One of the things talking to LSU, they were so complimentary about the skill of Lauren Betts. Whenever we would bring up the size, the LSU players, as well as Kim Moulton, would say it's not just the size, it's she's so skilled. Her footwork, next level. Here's Rice. Oh, Rice, the hesitation. Can't finish it, but that's going to be number four on Angel Reese. And Reese goes right to the LSU bench. But Kim Mulkey, as of now, not sending in a sub. There's going to be a conversation here first. And now Del Rosario will check in. Angel Reese helps, leaves, comes back. Ah, she just went for the fake. Her frustration is not at all that that wasn't the right call. Her frustration is that it's number four and she knows she has to come out. Yep. And not even that she showed frustration, but just how she was walking to the basket or to the bench. And for Rice, we talked about before, Corey Close wanting Rice to make sure she's still aggressive with her attack. We have seen that now in the second half, especially to start this fourth quarter. It has bared fruit for UCLA. Here's Morrow off the deep inbound. Morrow gets the whistle against Iwala. And free throws for Anissa Morrow. Morrow missed a pair of free throws earlier, but has shot it well from the line this season. 81.5%. 71% in her collegiate career. Morrow knocks down the first. Pretty fun opening showing today, huh? <laughs> this has been amazing. You got three more of these coming your way on ABC and ESPN. And Morrow hits the second. That's off to Rice. Rice lost it. Here's Williams with numbers. 
Williams shovels Van Lith. Can't finish. Williams does. And now LSU back in front. They are ferocious off of turnovers going the other way. Here's Rice using the Betts screen. Rice gets Johnson on her hip. Betts. Two-player action with Rice. Rice looking for help. To the corner it goes. Osborne. Cut it. On a three. It is not easy to make a three when you catch the ball near the laces of your shoes. Osborne a couple of big threes in this second half. After starting quietly, Van Lift, no. Brown the rebound. Not a great decision to take that shot by Haley Van Lift. Inside, Betts got a touch but not a catch. Here comes Van Lift. Williams jitters off the line and banks it home. Michaela Williams, the freshman, completely under control. Ties this game at 58. Timeout. Ideally, you want the pass to go right to the shooter's pocket. Instead, at the laces, steps into it, drains it. On the other end, Michaela Williams, one of those freshmen who just looks older than she plays. Tie game in the Sweet 16, LSU-UCLA, 58 all with 6.41 to go in the fourth quarter. Now, when LSU took that time out, headed back to the huddle, Kim Mulkey grabs Flaugier Johnson, who's had a great game today, and then Angel Reese in as well with some words of encouragement as we send things over to Holly Rowe. What was interesting being in the huddle, Angel Reese out with those four fouls, but she is going to be the leader that she is for this team, begging her teammates to lock in on defense right now. Flashe Johnson hasn't scored in the fourth quarter, according to my note. I think they're trying to pump her up, get it moving, and at the end of the huddle, I heard Flashe saying to her teammates, we have got to move the ball, keep that offense moving, passing, and cutting so everybody can stay involved. All right, Holly, let's take a look at the game summary. Lange with 17.6 rebounds. UCLA was ice cold from three. They have heated up since. Six ties, 10 lead changes. Another double-double for Angel Reese, but is in foul trouble. And you appreciate that communication in the LSU huddle because we've seen it today a couple times where there's been poor shot selection. It's something that's happened at times during the course of this season. You need to have the right people taking the right shots in the right moments. UCLA nine assists in the second half on 11 made field goals. Here's Jaquez trying to get it into Betts, could not. Osborne wants to as well, nothing there. Rice, 10 to shoot. Osborne does find Betts. Betts, jumper, no. Rebound controlled by Flaugé Johnson. That looked like it was a zone for LSU on that possession. This is a team that has played 19 possessions of zone the entire season. Maybe that's why Kim Mulkey wanted the timeout after that made bucket last possession and to get Poa in for Van Liff. Here's Williams, her jumper is good. The freshman, cool, calm, and effective. Here's Hawkins right into the lane. We'll tie it with the layup. And that's one of the problems when you switch defenses is in transition, you have to make sure who you're guarding or where you're supposed to be on the floor. Hawkins with 11 points off the bench for UCLA. Tied at 60, 5.30 to go in the fourth. Morrow squaring up, spinning, taking, no. Betts another rebound for 15th. Here is Rice. Osborne and Rice calming things down. Van Lift goes back to the scorer's table. Reese still waits with her four fouls on the bench. Rice, no, will give it up. Betts, center of the lane, spinning, can't finish. Jaquez gets fouled on the putback. 
there's one of those gritty winning plays from Hawkes. Back and forth they go down the stretch here, Rebecca. Michaela Williams, the freshman, just a beautiful, pure mid-range game, and Hawkes, no one steps out to guard her. Nice screen there by Lauren Betts. This girl has superstar written all over her. She is the Steph Curry of women's basketball. You can't help but watch when she plays, where she's shooting from, the range, the confidence. Caitlin has ice in her veins. I mean, everybody knows it. How will she go for history? <laughs> it's really cool to see somebody just not be afraid of the moment. Caitlin Clark, the walking highlight reel. Caitlin Clark and Iowa up next against Colorado here on ABC. According to Vivid Seats, 54% of the tickets here purchased by Iowa fans. LSU, 36%. Remember, they're choosing from four fan bases with that. So you're going to hear a loud Iowa contingent. And Caitlin Clark, we know, record breaker, always seems to live up to the moment and leading Division One in points and assists this season as well as triple-doubles. Who will play the winner of Iowa and Colorado? That very much still up in the air. LSU and UCLA tied at 60 with 4.57 to go in this fourth. And interesting here, Rebecca, that Angel Reese is still on the bench with those four fouls. You won one. Okay, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Akez misses the second. One-point UCLA lead. Van Lith back in for last tier, Poa. Here's the freshman, Williams. Big buckets in this second half. Williams looking to shake Betts. Oh, my! What an authoritative rejection from Lauren Betts. Could feel the arena shaking from the force there. Here's Betts. One-on-one -on -one with Del Rosario. Betts turns and gets the foul. That is going to be number four on Del Rosario. Free throws for Betts. What's remarkable about this defensive possession for Lauren Betts on the screen, she switches out on the guard, Williams. And when she tries to elevate over her, Betts right far just says, uh-uh, not today. Well, we've heard Holly Rowe tell the story before, and Corey Close has mentioned to us that during preseason training, Lauren Betts made all the guard times on their different sprinting drills. That's how athletic and how fit Lauren Betts is. So, yeah, capable of switching out there, hanging with smaller players. Keep in mind, though, she missed the first game of the NCAA tournament. She's dealing with a, a sprained ankle. And Corkless said her mobility is a lim limited a little more than usual. <laughs> Did it look like it there? Did not. Three blocks, 12 points, 15 rebounds, two big free throws there for Betts. A three-point UCLA lead. Matches their largest of the game. Reese curling around, and that is going to be number four on Betts. So four on Betts, four on Reese. Hey, the Elite Eight round of the NCAA Women's Championship continues Sunday on ABC. One Eastern, it's Oregon State, South Carolina. South Carolina undefeated. And at 3.30 on ABC, it'll be NC State and Texas. All games also available on the ESPN app. So no shots here for Reese. And now Corey Close is going to try and spell a minute or two. Spets picks up the towel as a smile with Zonta coming into the game. Reese needs to be smart. Her guards, when they pass her the ball, need to be smart. Can't lead her into turnover situations. The Johnson lays it in. Beautiful play off the inbound. First bucket for Flaugé Johnson since there was 2.11 left in the third. And now Corey Close going to take a timeout. 3.50 to go in this fourth quarter. UCLA a one-point lead on LSU. Rebecca, this game has very much lived up to the hype thus far. We hope you all have enjoyed it just as much as we have thus far. 
two incredibly talented teams, two teams very capable of winning a national championship. But one of them goes home today. What is going to make the difference in this final three minutes and 50 seconds? I think one thing is uh, decision making and shot selection because when both play, uh, teams have worked to their strengths, they've gotten good looks. It's harder for UCLA now because their best offense has been playing through Lauren Betts. Well, she's not in the game because of the four fouls. We've seen from LSU when they take the right shots, when they go quickly in transition or work the ball to their bigs when they have the advantage. They have been very good. It's going to be about smart decision making here the last near four minutes. Holly? Moments like this, you need your best mental strength, and Corey Close coaches that a lot. Once a week, the UCLA players have what they call the mind gym, where they work with different performance coaches, how to be strong in these types of moments. Kiki Rice, in particular, writes on a sheet, the top of the sheet every single week says, we will get to the final four. They have practiced all year for a moment like this. Let's see if their mind gym allows them to succeed in this. Such a, a, a great story and a wonderful reminder in these moments, Holly. And UCLA, as a program, has never been to a Final Four. They've been to the Elite Eight twice, last in 2018. And Lauren Betts is back on the floor for the offensive possession. So Rice will inbound with Betts, Jaquez, Osborne, and London Jones. It's been a while since Jones has gotten a shot for heating up from three, changed this game. And Liff gets out to her quickly. Osborne backing away, five on the shot clock. Osborne with three, will take, and hit! A little thing, but really smart, smart for Osborne to wait for Betts to set the screen so she doesn't put her in a position to, to get her fifth foul. Reese and Betts both with four. Here's Morrow turning the corner. Reese will lay it in. Betts had to be careful. Morrow and Reese worked so well together underneath. 14 points, 10 rebounds for Angel Reese. Here is Osborne. Behind the Betts screen. Osborne on the drive. Kicks it back. Hotkins. Yes. Sixty-seven, sixty-four, UCLA. Morrow working hard against Haquez posting. Here's Van Liff. Dumping it underneath. Morrow has the size and the finish. Great job. Involve London Jones as the defender in the screen switches. You have such a great size advantage with Morrow on Jones. An interesting timeout here from LSU. In a tight game, they will only have one timeout remaining after this with 2.26 to go in this fourth quarter. You get an on-ball screen with Morrow. And there you see, she when she catches the ball, she hits London Jones a bit in the face, simply incidental contact, but great finish there. Well, what's at stake? LSU, the reigning national champions. Last team to repeat. Connecticut, when they won four straight, Brianna Stewart's incredible tenure. UCLA seeking its third ever Elite Eight berth and its first since 2018. But certainly, let's revisit the time out there because you're absolutely right. Now LSU has won in a game that's very close and you might need it later on to advance the basketball. We'll see if it costs LSU down the stretch here. 2.26 to go in the fourth. UCLA 67, LSU 66. Seventh meeting all time between these schools. They last met in 2011. UCLA's last win back in 1982. Both teams have shot it very well in this fourth quarter. Here is Osborne. London Jones out of the game for UCLA. Dugalich in. Here is Dugalich. Turning the corner will take and miss. Betts can't grab it. Johnson has it for LSU. Under two minutes to go. Great decision by Flage Johnson. Let her team get over and set up. Here's Johnson. Finds Reese. Reese inside. Gets denied. But a whistle. And who will it be on? Dugalich or Betts? It'll be on Dugalich. 
That is her third. Beck stays, and Reese goes to the line. Really nice job on the pick and roll, getting it to Reese. Did anyone touch her? I don't think so. Let's see. Nate catches her with the left hand coming back. And so Reese, four or five from the line today, 73% on the season. Ties the game. Sixty-seven all. LSU 15 of 20 from the strike. Reese hits them both. LSU back in front. 145 to go. Here's Rice. Rice drives it, gets denied. Flaugé Johnson on the block, and then Rice on the foul. Outstanding defense. Outstanding defense by Flaugé Johnson. And then the foul from Rice is not only her fourth, it's the team's fifth. So it will put LSU at the line as you saw the animated reaction of Corey Close. So here's Johnson hitting the first. Well, you talked about the command and control down the stretch tight moments. That also applies to the free throw line and being able to handle these moments Reese and Johnson returning national champions hitting their free throws thus far and again Flaugier Johnson has just played with a real maturity this entire game Three-point LSU lead Here's Osborne turning the corner Rice on the attack Rice can't spin it in Johnson then steps out of bounds on the rebound and it's going to be UCLA basketball. New life on this possession for the Bruins. Ooh. You wonder if Jaquez could have been called for a foul with the foot. And if that's what forced Johnson out of bounds. But they can't review for that. So it's just UCLA basketball here. And the officials are going to check on the clock. And UCLA gets a new shot clock because Johnson had possession off that rebound before going out. Here's Rice. Has to get it in. Could call a timeout. Doesn't. Jaquez on the drive. Misses the layup. Betts is there. Foul by, I believe, Reese. No. They will say it's on Morrow. Angel Reese was ready to depart, but it's number four on Morrow instead. UCLA has been insistent on having their guards drive the last few possessions, and until here, it's been fruitless. So Morrow on the elbow, because Reese was clean on the ball. And Rebecca, what you want to see instead is post-entry passes to Betts. A little bit more deliberate, yeah. It looks like they're trying to get to the free throw line. And, and like Kiki Rice, the last time after she got her shot blocked, it looks like she was looking for the foul even more than looking to finish. Here's Betts at the line, knocking down the first. Playing through Betts has been a pretty solid recipe for success for UCLA today. As mom Michelle knows well. Her daughter has shined on this stage. This is the second. Reese the rebound, her 11th of the day. LSU with the basketball, leading by two. Neither team is led by more than three at any point in this fourth quarter. Reese flashes, waits. Reese putting it on the deck, gets denied by Betts. Another chance here for LSU. Shot clock at five. Johnson lays it in. Flaugier Johnson to the rescue. 
LSU by four, and that's going to be an offensive foul. And number five on Kiki Rice. UCLA's best offense today has not been this. Just trying to overpower LSU's guards. And you see Rice certainly pushes off <laughs> Kim Mulkey, pushing off the invisible beast as well. Angel Reese getting the crowd into it as Rice fouls out. 72-68, LSU leading UCLA. Rebecca, one of the things that Angel Reese talked to us about yesterday was feeling the weight of expectations this season. She said last year, as we went on to our championship, no one had been expecting that. So we played freely, played light. This year, we feel those expectations, so it's a different challenge. But tense moments down the stretch here, and she and Flaugé Johnson, the players who did it last year, have answered the bell. Well, think about it. They've also gotten used to playing with the weight of those expectations. So here in a sweet 16 game in a sold out arena, it's a moment that they can be a little more comfortable with. And Flaugé Johnson, man, every single time they've needed her to make the right decision she has and to finish and to do things on the defensive end as well. Angel Reese telling the crowd, yeah, get into it. And this LSU program with a massive following here in Albany, a massive following around the nation. And they are 39 seconds away from heading to the Elite Eight where they will meet either Iowa or Colorado. That game up next. Well, Rebecca, UCLA led this game 67-64 with 2.46 to go. But Kim Mulkey's LSU team on an 8-1 run since. And Sir. that was LSU's final timeout. LSU with the basketball, about a nine-second difference game in shot clock. So how do you play this defensively if you're UCLA? You foul, and Van Lith is going to go to the line. Van Lith, one of eight from the floor, one of two from the strike. We know when these regions came out, many had an eye towards a potential rematch between LSU and Iowa. LSU 36 seconds away from punching their ticket to the Elite Eight. Colorado stands in the way of Iowa next. Still time for UCLA as Van Lip hits both. And the lead is six for LSU. UCLA timeout. <laughs> Ellie Van Lith's dad gives the fist bump. UCLA with one timeout remaining. Both teams in the bonus. LSU on a 10-1 run here, and they have hit their free throws down the stretch. So important here for UCLA on the offensive end to get something quick. It doesn't have to be a three, it can be a two, but you need to let as little time as possible run off this clock. UCLA on the day, seven of 29 from deep, but they started this game one for 16. They do not have Kiki Rice. It would have been one of the options from three in this situation. Haquez, Dugalich, Osborne, Jones, and Betts. The five on the floor for UCLA. Here is Dugalich. Osborne finds Betts. Deep catch and a foul on Reese. And that is going to be her fifth. So Angel Reese fouls out. And Betts will shoot two free throws. 
Corey Close is furious because Angel Reese said something to her and the bench as she was walking by. And you see Corey Close now talking to the official about it. And Corey Close, one of the things she talked about to us before the game is taunting and saying she would put that bug in the officials' ears about taunting and the difference between celebrating, reacting versus taunting. But no whistle there has close upset. Betts, meanwhile, misses the second free throw again. Loose ball, though, and we can have a foul or a hell ball. Should it be will foul. be a foul, yes. And so Flage Johnson will go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, as soon as Flage, it's clear that she has possession. You have to foul her there and credit her for handling it well. She stands up quickly and then just walks to the end of the floor. Flage, 7 of 8 from the line today. 23 points. He talked about just the poise she has played with all game. And hits another free throw. Angel Reese fouled out. She's had to navigate foul trouble throughout this game. But another double-double for her as Johnson misses the second free throw. Still a game here. Osborne. Trying to find an angle. Jones will fire a three. Can't hit. Dugalich gets blocked from behind by Johnson. LSU has it, and that should just about do it with 12.7 to go. Johnson another block block steals big buckets big free throws huge game for Johnson Anissa Moore with a big game as well misses the first free throw we said it at the half though Flaugier Johnson was the best player on the floor and that's how this game is going to end as well she has been the best player on the floor about 12 rebounds for the point guard to go with her 24 points as Morrow makes the second free throw Timeout taken by UCLA, their final timeout. And time now for our Capital One rewarding performance. The returning champions from the starting lineup, Flaugier Johnson and Angel Reese. Just incredibly impactful performances by both young women and Flaugier Johnson from the beginning of this game. Hitting threes, getting inside, defending as well. And Angel Reese just doing what Angel Reese does. And that's be relentless on the glass, relentless in the paint, showing emotion, leading our team. 16 points, 11 rebounds for Reese. 24 points, 12 rebounds for Johnson. Reese has fouled out. Iowa, Colorado coming up next here on ABC. The winner of that game will play the winner of this game Monday night on ESPN. Jones was open. Instead, it's Dugalich in the corner. No. Rebound Van Lith. Van Lith escapes, and a foul is given with 6.6 to go in this fourth quarter. Flaugier Johnson asking for the crowd. And receiving. <laughs> Saying, wait, I need a little. Okay, that's good. It's like she's in the studio and asking for a little more something, something. All right, we're good now. I need a little more base in the headset. Exactly right. Yeah. Come on, I need a. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah that's it. That's <laughs> it. All right. Van Lith hits both. Osborne will take it across. Dugalich is three. The defending champs are not done yet. 
LSU is headed to the Elite Eight. 78-69 the final as the Tiger Tigers advance to the 10th Elite Eight in program history. And UCLA, who had a lead with under three minutes to go, falls short as LSU finishes this game on a 14-2 run. LSU just with great experience and toughness in the moment. And we know they've dealt with a lot all season long, been able to overcome adversity time and again and in a game, within a game, the adversity that you face. The fourth quarter was terrific for Lajay Johnson the entire game, just leading the way for LSU. Big hug from Lauren Betts and Angel Reese. Holly detailed that story for us and playing together on Team USA, practicing against each other every day. And Angel and Flage are with Holly Rowe. Well, it took everything from both of you. You combined for 40 points, 23 rebounds. How hard was it to get this win? This is a good UCLA team. Man, I mean, we they, Coach Bob told us before the game, no rebounds, no rings. And we knew we had to rebound. Lauren Best is a great player playing with her this summer. It was amazing. So being able to be composed and dominant this game was important. Speaking of being dominant, Flage, your offense has taken such a huge step this year. How have you become a primetime player? I've been focused. I've been in the gym. I've been locked in. Every day I'm in the gym putting in reps. Every day. Because I know people are going to discredit me because I rap and I hoop. So I know I got to go extra hard. So that's what I do. I be in the gym. She does rap. Her new single is It Ain't My Fault. But yeah. today this win was your fault. It's our fault. It is our fault. Get out your feelings. Get a bag. Johnson's fault. Just an incredible performance from Flage offensively, defensively, and on the glass. LSU, the defending champs, take down UCLA and they await the winner of our next game on ABC. Colorado facing Caitlin Clark and Iowa.